Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-57. Last time on the Bard's podcast, the group witnessed the burial rites for the two deceased guards and enjoyed a nice quiet evening in Colby. Without warning, a herd of wild bison stampeded through town doing minor property damage, but injuring no one. We rejoin them as they confirm a larger problem isn't afoot. Well, anything? asked Vargas Stoutheart. Several minutes passed, but Kay fought Silvertongue and Lady Irena shook their heads negatively. Nothing. No stragglers, no pursuers. I see nothing, proclaimed the bard. The rest of the group came up behind the trio and asked if there were any further problems coming. Peepers was acting normally, which seemed to bode well for the state of affairs. While the stampede had come close to the fiery bodies, they did not knock them over, which brought a huge sigh of relief from Sister Elaine. The magistrate returned to the group and reconfirmed that no one was hurt. The group inquired if there had been much damage with the reply of, Thank Dilo, no. The magistrate hustled off to continue checking the area. Cabe and Lady Irena shrugged their shoulders, indicating they found nothing unusual in the darkness. Well, I suppose we could wander out there, replied the gnome sailor. The party thought for a few moments and noticed Peepers showed no sign of impending danger as it had just before the stampede. Fargus spoke first, stating, Nah, probably just a random thing. They were probably lost or being chased by wolves that wouldn't come into town anyway. I'm all for hitting the sack. Looking down, he pointed at Bulger and stated that he had to be up at the crack of dawn anyway to leave for Phoenix. After a couple of trying days, the group opted to retire early. The ladies each gave Bulger a hug and wished him well on his trip back to find a ship before heading back to their own shared quarters. The men went to their chamber and Fargus asked the squad sailor if he had changed his mind. Smiling, the gnome pointed out that he had seawater in his veins and probably always will. Fargus and Cabe stood up and shook the gnome's hand, thanking him for his assistance and wished him well. Fargus added, Try not to wake us up, huh? I need my sleep. Bulger laughed deeply and waved his finger into the air. You two need all the beauty sleep you can muster. I would not make the world pay for that issue. The men blew out the lantern in the room and each settled in for a good night's sleep. The next morning, sunlight filtered into the room and Fargus stirred, waking up Cabe Silvertongue. The half-elf looked across the room and observed that Bulger was gone and his bed was made neatly as if he had never been there. Peering out of the window, he noticed that the clouds had rolled in, but no rain was currently present. Fargus stirred and also observed the empty bed. The ranger scratched his head and stretched out, letting out a huge yawn. I really thought he would change his mind, barked out the large humor. Cabe shook his head in agreement, but pointed out that everyone had to follow their own heart. Tossing the ranger his shirt, the pair got dressed and packed up their belongings as they would be heading out east later this morning. The men met the ladies down in the common room and noted that Karina looked much better after getting some quality sleep. The women were advised of Bulger's departure and Lady Arena mimicked Cabe's quip about following the heart. Breakfast continued with some light banter when Cabe realized that he had not given Bulger his share of the money that they had received. A quick check with the waitress determined that Bulger had left nearly two hours previously. Angered at his forgetfulness, the others pointed out that it was an accident and maybe they'll find a port city that will have information on the known. The group returned to their room and gathered their belongings for their journey. As they left Comstock Inn, the magistrate spotted and hailed them. He wished them well and told them that they were always welcome in the town of Colby. A block away from the stables, Fargus excused himself and said he needed to take care of some business and headed towards the tavern. Business was light that morning and Winnie was already cleaning the tables with her father. Upon seeing the stout ranger, the two stopped cleaning. 
A nod from the large man was given, and Winnie went over to speak with Fargus. He explained that he was leaving town and wasn't sure if he would ever be back. The words were difficult for the ranger and the young barmaid, but they parted with kisses on the cheek, and her father came over to them. His impressive frame towered over even the large ranger, and he reached out his hand and thanked Fargus for the work he had done for Colby. The man went to the bar and reached over, procured a wineskin, and handed it over to Fargus. For your gnome friend, I know he likes the flavor. Fargus took the item but handed it back, explaining that Bolger had left to return to Phoenix to find a ship. The tavern owner thought for a moment and then handed it back. For you and your friends then, safe journey. The ranger thanked both of them and headed out without turning around as he knew he wouldn't be able to contain his sadness. The others had waited for Fargus across the road and did not broach the subject, seeing the look in his eyes. Peepers whacked its round head into the man, earning a pat and a coo. As the group reached the livery stable, they observed the half-orc who had hailed them with a smile. The mounts had been prepared, and they had the gray mule with the others. What's with the mule? inquired Sister Elaine. The livery manager explained that it was a gift from the citizens of Colby for all the hard work the party had done. The livery manager handed the reins over to each member and assisted the ladies in getting mounted on their horses. Cabe reached down and extended a hand to the man who had returned the gesture. Good travel, half-breed, said the livery manager with a wink and a smirk. Good life to you, kind sir, replied the bard. The clomping of hooves was heard exiting the barn and a gruff voice inquired if the two were going to kiss. Smiles crossed the faces of the party members as they observed Bulger riding up on his Palomino. His face carried a smug look. You owe me money, he said in a gruff tone. The smiles broadened and Cabe nodded in acknowledgement. That we do, my squat friend. That we do. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.